So now let's take a look at a different kind of problem uh, where we're going to be doing some counting. And this is now working with combinations with repetitions. And so what we want to ask is how many ways are there to select, say, for example, in this case, select five pieces of fruit from a bowl containing apples, oranges, and pears if the order in which the pieces are selected does not matter. Only the type of fruit and not the individual piece matters. And there are at least four pieces of each type of fruit in the bowl. Okay. In fact, we want to say that there are at least five. That way we can make sure that we don't run out of each one of them. Okay, so we have four, five pieces of each type of fruit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine that I've got, uh, we're going to do a problem that's called the stars and bars. Okay, it's called the stars and bars. And so I want to imagine that I've got my five pieces of fruit. One, two, three, four. Those are my stars. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. All right, and my bars are what are going to divide them up. So like, say, for example, um, I imagine that I have a bar right here, and this makes um, uh, apples. So I'll have, in this case, one apple, and then I'll have another bar here, and that'll be oranges, and I'll have another bar here that's pears, okay? And the thing about it, what we want to imagine is, is that if I just move my two bars, if I move my two bars, I get another ordering of the number of apples, the number of pears, the number of oranges. So like, for example, I can imagine I have two apples now, okay, one orange, um, and two pears, and that's a different ordering, okay? So just moving those bars, wherever I want to move the bars to, is actually going to give me a different number of apples, oranges, and pears, okay? Now, how many different places could I possibly put right? These bars. Well, I mean, I, for each one of them, okay, if I imagine I've got one where one of the stars is, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different slots that'll either have a bar, okay, or it'll have a star, right? So I have seven slots and I'm going to choose two of them, okay? So this is going to be a combination, right, of seven choose two. All right, I've got three categories, right? So that's only gonna require two bars in order to split them up into three categories. And then I've got five objects, okay? This is equal to C of five, okay? Which is the number of objects or number of pieces of fruit that I'm looking to categorize, plus three, the number of different types of fruit, minus one, because I don't actually don't need that many bars to represent each fruit. Choose, okay, choose two, or, by the way, we could also utilize, and I think we're actually going to see this, C of 7 choose 5, right? Which is where if you're just going to choose where to put your, your place your fruits, right? Imagine that before they're placed into any bowl, they don't have any form at all, okay? And then once you put them in a bowl, they become an apple. Once you put it in a bowl, it becomes an orange, right? Okay? And you want to imagine how many different ways that you can possibly do that, all right? If we remember from one of our theorems, combination of seven choose five is going to give you the same as the combination of seven choose two. Okay, those two are going to be exactly the same. Okay, now in this case, all the stars, right, all of our pieces of fruit, okay, and our bars, they're not different in any way. Okay, the order in which we place these things, that it's not going to matter. One bar in one place is the same as having the other bar in the same place. Okay, so hence that's why we're utilizing the combination. Right, and this is how we utilize the stars and bars. Right, why don't we take a look at another example? Let's suppose that we have this kind of example. How many ways are there to select six bills from a cash box containing one dollar bills, two dollar bills, five dollar bills, ten dollar bills, twenty dollar bills, fifty dollar bills, and a hundred dollar bills? So now, what we're going to do is we're going to imagine I've got my cash box. Okay, here's my ones, my twos, my fives my 10s, my 20s, my 50s, and my $100 bills, okay? In fact, I only need, that's just gonna have the 100, all right? Now, if you notice, I have one, two, three, four, five, six bars here, okay? For my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven denominations, right? I don't need actually a seventh bar, right? Because it's like the endpoint represents the seventh bar. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to situate where should I put my bills, 
Okay, so I make a, you know, a star with each one of the places that I want to put my bills. And there you go. Okay, so those are my five different places that I want to put my bills. If I change where I put the stars, I get a different set of, uh, set of values. Okay, so if I look at this, I'm going to choose from one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. I have 11 different slots. Okay. And I'm going to choose places to put these five stars into those slots. Okay. Where am I going to put the five stars? You could also choose where to put the bars. It's not going to change anything. Okay. So that's going to give me C of, and that'll be seven. Okay. Because my seven denominations plus five for my five uh, bills that I'm going to be placing. Oh, it's six bills. Six bills. Let's add a bill. So it's plus six bills. Okay, minus one, okay, because we don't need actually the last bar, and we're going to choose six locations. Six locations for the stars, or, okay, right, since this is 12, it's actually, well, there it is, that's it. You have the same number of bars and same number of stars, so you can choose either one, all right? So this is going to end up giving me C of 12, all right? That's the idea. Notice, okay, a couple of things. Assume that the order in which the bills are chosen, chosen, does not matter, and the bills are indistinguishable, okay? So given that that's the case, when we have a problem in which we're doing something like this, we can envision it using these stars and bars. So our theorem states there are C of n plus r minus 1 choose r, which equals C of n plus r minus 1 choose n minus 1, are combinations from a set with n elements when repetition of the elements is allowed. And that finishes up the lecture. That's it. Not bad, eh? All right.